In this video, we're going to be learning the regions and subregions of the adult brain. We're going to divide the adult brain into four major regions. The first region is the most inferior and connects directly to the spinal cord. This region is called the brainstem. Attaching to the posterior aspect of the brainstem, we find this region, which is called the cerebellum. Cerebellum means little brain because it has all of these folds and looks like the upper brain region. So brainstem, cerebellum. Sitting above the brainstem, we find this central core region. This is known as the diencephalon. Diencephalon means through brain because signals traveling up and down within the brain have to pass through this region. The most superior region of the brain is known as the cerebrum. The cerebrum makes up about 83% of the brain's total volume, so it's by far the largest region. So just again, our four regions, the brainstem, cerebellum, diencephalon, and cerebrum. Now that we have the four major regions down, let's look at some of the subregions that we can find within each of those four major regions. We'll start with the brainstem first. The inferior subregion inside the brainstem is called the medulla oblongata. This is where we find reflex centers for heart rate, breathing, and blood pressure. So this part of your brain essentially keeps us alive. The anterior bulge on the brainstem is known as the pons. Pons plays an important role in breathing depth and breathing rate. At the very top, we have the midbrain. So this forms the upper region of the brainstem. This is involved in visual and auditory reflex. For example, you hear a loud noise, you turn to look, that's going to be structures in your midbrain that do that. On the posterior side of the midbrain, we find a series of four bumps. These four bumps are called the corpora quadrigemina. Corpus means body, quad means four, and gemini means siblings. So it's the four sibling bodies. Now, since this is a sagittally sectioned brain, we're only looking at half of it, we can only see two of the bumps. But if we grab a brainstem model, which I happen to have right here, so we can see there's our brainstem, and we turn it to look at the back, we can see one, two, three, four. We can see our corpora quadrigemina, the two superior colliculi and the two inferior colliculi. So there are a total of four bumps on the back of the midbrain. Moving on to the diencephalon, the diencephalon is made up of four separate parts. We have our thalamus, which is this kind of egg-shaped region right in the center. It's by far the largest part of our diencephalon. Anterior to the thalamus and inferior, we have this region, which is known as the hypothalamus, right here. Those are the only two regions you have to identify for lab, the thalamus and hypothalamus. In lecture, we also talked about the epithalamus, which is this region right up here, and the subthalamus, which could be found down here. In terms of our cerebrum, we're going to divide the cerebrum down into the four most visible lobes. We're not going to talk about the insula because it's buried deep inside of this lateral sulcus. In the front, we have the frontal lobe. Under the parietal bone, we have our parietal lobe. In the back, we find the occipital lobe. And then along the side, under the temporal bone, we have the temporal lobe. An easy way to see this is by looking at our colored brain model here. We can see the green, brown, and lipstick red color. This is all the frontal lobe. The blueberry blast and the fried egg those together make up the parietal lobe. Our concrete with the grape jelly stain on it, that's going to be the occipital lobe in the back. And then the temporal lobe is this kind of bland looking lobe that's extending out along the sides. 